the AI Alliance, which essentially is very pro-competition uh, to try to level the playing field for smaller people to smaller companies to be able to innovate and for the big companies not to, uh, which correspondingly could mean the big companies not having uh, a monopoly control over it. Yeah. So, Paul, you're up, buddy. Yeah, we talked about um, AI Alliance in uh, January, but uh, they, they had 50 members at that time, and uh, they've got acquired about a little over 30 new members recently, and they've got, uh, they established uh, a couple of, of new working groups, which is the first one. But the uh, Alliance's uh, uh, aim is really to uh, promote responsible and ethical AI all over the world. They're focusing in on collaboration, uh, governance, uh, testing, policy, education, um, you know, looking at hardware ecosystems. So, I mean, it's uh, it's uh, it's good for the for the little uh, for the for the little companies and the big companies too. Um, the two working groups that they put out one is uh, the AI Safety and Trust Tooling Workgroup. Uh, it's going to focus on uh, AI safety, ethics, uh, cybersecurity, and it's going to be responsible to things like uh, creating the tools and the resources and the, the white papers and things like that. Uh, the, the next one is the AI policy uh, uh, work group, and uh, they're responsible for engaging uh, public forums and bringing in experts and policymakers um, to talk about innovation and, and barriers and opportunities. So uh, I think as a whole, you're going to um, have a big influence on policy and regulations. Uh, the ones not involved in this are uh, Google, Microsoft, uh, OpenAI, um, I don't know if it's real, AWS, I think, but uh, they're not involved in it. And But I think the market and regulations are going to be heavily influenced by uh, by the AI Alliance. It was originally formed by uh, IBM and Meta. Mm -hmm. so, can you yeah? Can you so there was the 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 two for the the two companies that started were IBM and Meta, right? Yeah. yeah. And it's so interesting uh, when I look at Meta and what they've done to level the playing field for the industry. Uh, the first thing was OCP, the Open Compute Project. Right. Before Meta was gigantic, they were trying to figure out, hey, how do I deal with the advantage that Google and Microsoft would have from scale? So what they did is they came and they they helped create industry standards for hyperscaler infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And these these were compute uh, storage memory layouts, and I'm sure I'm missing something, Matt. Uh, I think even even cooling, you know, down yeah. to the placement. Uh, down to the placement of the boards and then, you know, the super micros and, you know, even at the time the Dell and HP, uh, when it started, uh, would actually have OCP compliant uh, uh, infrastructure as well. And Meta doesn't need to do that anymore because they're freaking gigantic uh, mm -hmm. at this point, but they, there still is an OCP open compute project and it continues uh, uh, to this day doesn't get as much fanfare as it used to. Um, it's still huge, though. I mean, uh, God love Frank Frankowski, who started it. Um, mm -hmm. It's a, it's a, it's, and it still influences the OEMs. It's, it's incredible. I don't think it's Yeah, and then you got into PyTorch, which mm -hmm. was again another um, uh, Google uh, TensorFlow looked like it was going to run away uh, with it and and become the standard for machine learning and and. Meta was like, oh, I don't think so. Here's here's PyTorch, uh, and created that as an alternative uh, standard that that you essentially have to have to support uh, some way or another. And I'm uh, I'm missing another standard they created. As remember, OCP, uh, PyTorch, PyTorch. Ba, 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 ba. Something in the AR VR space. Anyways, I don't get them all right, but uh, 
I, I, I remember thinking they had created three things. 